Hello, friends of the internet. It's Alice Adams. Welcome back to Wonderland. As you can tell from the title of this video, I am finally... As you can tell from the title of this video, I am finally filming another lobe scalpeling update. Cha-cha-cha! Before we jump in, I do want to give a little disclaimer. If my voice sounds a little bit different, that is because I recently recovered from COVID, and this is what I'm rocking right now, but I'm hoping that it's giving Scarlett Johansson and not Oscar the Grouch. So in November of 2016, I had my lobe scalpeled, and it really doesn't feel like that long ago. It's so crazy, like time really has flown by. I'm just gonna start by referring to points from my last update video, but if you haven't seen my other lobe scalpeling videos, I'm just gonna put some links in the description for you. You're definitely gonna wanna check that out. But if you've seen that, great, let's keep going. So in my last update, my ears were an inch and three quarters, which is also known as 44 millimeters. They are now comfortably sitting at an inch and seven eighths. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, which is also 48 millimeters. But if I wear heavy jewelry, they do size up <laughs> by themselves to two inches, which is 50 millimeters. I was laughing because in my last update, I was like, yeah, at this size, they're not super shocking looking, but they're still big, and I like that. And I feel like I've grown a lot since then too, and they're shocking now. They're shocking, and I like that. Um, I'm really glad that they're at a size that, hello? Sorry. <laughs> I'm really glad that they're at a size that is very eye-catching and like makes people stop and stare. It's cool. It's a huge part of my look now. Like this is a huge part of my expression of self and like how I identify visually to people. And I like that. It's a very defining feature. Also in my last update, I was showing how I could put my earlobes over the tops of my ears, but I noticed that they were like really tight against my ear. Now, I left this one out just to show you. There is nothing. There's nothing toit about this situation. I could probably fit another plug like while it's over the top of my ear. <laughs> so yeah, um, this is what they look like now. They're super healthy, super duper healed. The size is completely set in. I no longer have to sleep with jewelry in with the airplane neck pillows. Thank goodness that's over with. As much as it wasn't uncomfortable, it's just an inconvenience for everyday living. And now I can just take my plugs out every single night when I go to bed without any fear of them shrinking. I have been experimenting a little bit with how long it can go, and so I've found that they only get a little bit tight if I leave them out for like a week. And even then, they're not really sizing down, they're just tighter. And so in the case like that, where I would, let's say, forget or choose not to wear jewelry for a week, I would just pop something heavy like stone in my ear, and then a couple of hours later, they're back to where they need to be. The cartilage piece that I had mentioned before, this guy still poses an issue or two from time to time in terms of it getting sore or experiencing a lot of pressure. But fortunately, it's not as often as it used to. Now that um, I do have some, some give and like some room, nothing is tightly pushing against it anymore. Whereas before, because the earlobe was so tight against the jewelry, the jewelry was pushing more. So now, because it's more relaxed, there's not as much pressure. But if I'm laying down on my side with jewelry in, watching a movie or something, I do definitely experience that pressure. And so I would say coming from someone who's been through it. That is probably like one of the most major inconveniences of having my lobe scalpeled. So if your artist is willing to do any type of work to that cartilage piece, like I've read some do, definitely opt for that. Oh, and teardrop shaped plugs that were my savior before. Yeah, they pretty much just exclusively fall out of my ears now. <laughs> I can't keep them in. They're cute for a picture, but that's about it. A con to having my ears scalpeled and getting up to this size is I've said this before, but the larger your ears are, the more limited you are with the types of jewelry that you can get. I really miss the days when I could just like shop on Hot Topic and get <laughs> all different patterns and designs on like acrylic plugs or, you know, like really, really fun, funky designs. It's definitely harder to find in the larger sizes. I feel like now I have like clear glass, a variety of stone, and the odd, very odd acrylic plug and then like silicone tunnels. And that's pretty much it, which fortunately is not a huge burden for me, but you know, sometimes you wanna 
dress it up a little bit and jazz it up and I can't really do that just everything's very plain something that I've found very fascinating I wouldn't call it a con necessarily but a thing that has been happening <laughs> is anytime my ears get a little bit irritated or swollen, the way that the swelling occurs on the ear, you can actually see like exactly where each suture used to be around the lobe. I guess probably a scar tissue thing, I don't know. You tell me if you know, but yeah, it's super weird. Even after all this time, it's been almost six years, and I can get those little reminders of, oh yeah, that, that's what happened there. That's what that used to look like. I'm gonna try and find some pictures and insert them now. The largest con to getting my lobe scalpel that I was not anticipating at all is I went through a very long, very frustrating period of time where I could not keep jewelry in my ears. Plugs were falling out of my ears constantly. Every day between like 2018 and 2021 was like the freaking pinball machine from hell as my very heavy plugs flew out of my very large ears very aggressively <laughs> and created the most obnoxious ruckus at like 120 decibels in public places, including my work. It was just, it was a lot. And yes, I mentioned that I liked people looking at my ears, but not like that. And so that problem, it was very consistent. It was like every single day I went through a period of time where I just kind of gave up putting any jewelry in my ears at all because of it. Such an annoyance, such an inconvenience. Especially when I was working, I didn't have time to be constantly chasing my plugs all over the place because they roll away. It's... <laughs> Ah! <laughs> Let me explain more why that happened. I was in such position because my ears went through that period of time where they were super duper sensitive to like any material that I put in them. So they stopped accepting bone, they stopped accepting wood, they stopped accepting silicone and acrylic, anything lightweight. So all that they would let me put in them without absolutely freaking out was glass and stone, the two heaviest materials. And so because they're so pliable now from healing fully and from settling into the procedure fully, they would relax through gravity and then they, my ears would be too big. So I'd be trying to bring like two to three pairs of plugs with me wherever I'd go every single day because halfway through the day, I'd have to be putting in new plugs that were like a half size bigger and the heavy plugs make a big ruckus. Like I said, I've been asked a lot if I regret getting my lobe scalpeled and I have never regretted it. But during that period of time, I did feel and have emotions that swam in the rivers beside regret. <laughs> I guess we call that doubt. But thankfully, and suddenly, I didn't do anything. My ears just kind of stopped. And I discovered that with silicone specifically, there's different types of silicone blends. Unfortunately, they don't describe which blend is which on the sites that you're buying them from, so it is a bit of a crap shoot. But I found that UK Custom Plugs has a silicone blend that doesn't affect my ears. Whereas Body Art Forms, which I would go as far as to say maybe has a higher quality of jewelry, their silicone does negatively affect my ears. So very interesting, but so freaking helpful. Oh my gosh. I still cannot wear wood or bone. They're extremely dehydrating to my ears to the point that it can be detrimental, but that's okay. Like I find that the wooden look is a little bit more like hippie fun time, which I love for other people, but it's not really the look that I'm going for anyways these days. And so all in all, it's been a wild ride. It's been a crazy journey. I am so glad that I did go through with this procedure to scalpel my ears. I love the way that they look. I love the way that they feel, like they're really comfortable now. Yeah, I mean, I think that's all that I have to share today. But if I skipped over anything that you needed to know about, comment that down below pretty please. Do take a look. There's lots of information in my previous lobe scalpeling videos. They're a little cringe, a little lower quality than they are now, but still lots of helpful information that you might wanna check out if you are considering undergoing this procedure. Please like this video if you wanna see more earlobe related videos for me and you know what's coming subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and for more videos that are not like this but that are still cool thank you so much for showing me love in the comments and for continuing to come back even though i don't post quite as regularly on this channel but if you do want to keep up with me on the regular be sure to follow my main channel which is the light side of the paranormal for some spooky good times and i'll see you later bye